Hello people, and welcome back to part 14 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And thank you so much indeed for all the support, kind comments and suggestions on last episode's or last week's uh, Botanical Garden expansion, right? Had a wonderful idea of bringing in some pathways across the runes, and you guys even suggested uh, actually lighting up the runes at night time, which would be a tremendous addition, I agree. So we can do this just by dropping in some part life lights, perhaps around each of the corners of these little chaos stars, right? Maybe a couple in the middle. Just adds a little more attention to it, doesn't it? So wonderful suggestions of lighting up the runes. And hopefully have some appreciated use of some other assets that we might not usually consider placing in this area. But it's nice. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. So thank you for all the support. And indeed, as we mentioned in this episode, today we are going to talk about how we can work with the beachfront with no specific beach DLC. And especially if you're playing totally vanilla, as this series is intended, then working with the beachfront, especially one that's this big on Diamond Coast, can be quite a challenge to get it to look right and to blend in with the rest of your downtown, providing that you are indeed putting it on the edge of the downtown. So we're going to cover sort of three different ideas today. We're going to cover sort of a public transport area of the beach where we can accept ferries. We are also going to do sort of more natural beach development using some of the nature reserve stuff. And then a very sort of attraction and tourist focused beach area where all of our public transport can converge and it should sit really nicely in the foreground of our skyline now. But otherwise there is some nice ideas in store today. Let's talk about how we can work with the vanilla beachfront in city skyline, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to start my beach build just from the edge of the downtown road frame that we set up a couple of episodes ago now. I'm going to bring a tree road out onto the beach, okay? So we might get some concerns today from people in the comments that are suggesting you might not find too much heavily tarmacked road on sand just because of the sort of building issues that that brings. But we're going to have to deal with that. So I want to come in and grab one of my content creator trees. I'm definitely feeling uh, some of the California palms to sit alongside these beach roads, okay? And it's going to really help. It even adds to the skyline, doesn't it? You know, it's a nice little addition here, especially with the trams flowing through too. We'll also get the other tram line flowing today also, which will help with getting people back into from the area. I'm going to dive now into a unique building, and I already know the one that I want to use. We are going to go for the official park, which is a really nice looking plaza. Okay. I'm going to place that in there. I'm going to come back to my tree road. And then we're going to create a perfect little box around this now. All right. Then I can trim up my frames. Now we will have further roads coming off of this, of course, but for right now, I really want to focus on getting everything centralized in to make sure that we're respecting the look of the beach. All right, so I'm happy with that. This is going to draw lots of people down to the beach and also serve as really nice decoration here too, especially when it's framed by these palms, right? Wonderful news. Let's come down again by another 10 now and we'll do another little holding frame. Now, I think I'm feeling one of the European uniques here. Um, if you don't have access to these unique buildings, it's because your European style is turned off in your content manager. Uh, just go ahead and load it up, and then you'll get access to all your European style buildings. Um, the London Eye is an appreciated aesthetic for me. It could also be horrendously bold for some people. People might not like this large of an asset down on the beach. It's up to you. You can also switch it out for um, an amusement park at Ferris Wheel. If you have made an amusement park yet, then you can use the Ferris Wheel here. It's a lot smaller, but again, it's not unique. So I think, again, it's fairly bold. I'm going to be happy with it. But we can now see that we're starting to get some uh, fairly awkward uh, vanilla terraforming. So we definitely want to make sure that we approach this correctly. Let's bring off a nice sensible level terrain. I also want to just amend the height that the roads are sat on, just so I can get that perfect box in again. And then just worry about the terraforming once the asset sits exactly how I want it to. Okay, so I'm going to bring it all the way around again. Make sure we hit the right angle there. There we go. Okay. If you're not totally happy with its orientation, then you can discuss perhaps Switching it around. Yeah. These things make small amounts of differences, but a difference nonetheless. And I'm really liking how that's sitting within my skyline now. Because it will actually become part of the skyline. As that one of the hot air balloons lands in the botanical garden. 
Very nice indeed. Okay, again, from all angles is very important. So I'm now just thinking about how my beachfront is looking here, and I can see that I've had some residential buildings develop that I cannot stand. I absolutely hate these sorts of ones. They're basically from Surviving Mars. Just no thank you. So I'm going to get rid of all this. Even the park as well, and possibly even the buildings over this side. And I know that there's a building from the Japanese Content Creator Park, which again we worked with during the Skyline construction, the Resort Hotel right here. And I'm going to want this sat just right along the beachfront. Okay. It's a nice, big, luxurious hotel. It's definitely going to blend into my existing skyline and also replaces some more horrendous assets that I'm really not a fan of. So again, it's a vibe we can get on board with. And we've got some people heading down to the beachfront now as well. Already, we're starting to see a little bit of life come in, which is great. So, now what I want to do is prepare uh, the first frame for a little bit of zoning that we're going to do today. So, I think I'm happy with this, and I might want to maybe bring it down just on a slightly different axis, alright? And maybe sort of trim this off. And why don't we start bringing in some curves now so we're not so rigidly following the grid. And just come up with a curve. Whether or not you want to stay snapped to road guidelines is up to you. If you'd rather sort of eyeball it yourself, then you can. But I think I'm going to be happy with this. Okay, let's give ourselves a little district, of course. We've worked with micro districts before. Um, I'm going to go for a touch of leisure specialization on this one here. Of course, which is our after dark uh, commercial specialization. Let's get that in there. And now let's talk about what we can do with some sort of more wild beach areas, perhaps. So what I'm going to do here is just draw off a small little stretch of dirt road um, off of the tram road and treat it as some sort of passing point. Okay, and I'll explain what we're going to do with this here. Then I'm going to come into a pathway. Whichever path you choose is up to you. I think I'm going to go for nature reserve with decoration, just so we can see the lights on the beach during the night time. Let's create a little windy pathway here, right? I'm going to bring this down. And then into the beachfront. Doesn't look too much right now, does it? And because we have no sort of beach props, the open sides on the vanilla city skylines are very much left exposed. However, feel free to place in some larger rock formations. But you don't want any larger rock formations, perhaps a little general cluster of the vanilla overgrowth palettes. Again, whichever ones you favour. If you don't want kind of the very thick, dense looking ones, then I definitely consider the lighter, thinner ones. Okay, they might be a little bit more sort of beach appropriate, if you like. So let's place a few of these around to your desire. Don't worry, we will get power through eventually. And you can just sink it through straight away if you like. And then a couple of smaller rocks as well, in and around these little overgrowth clusters that you've just placed down. Two or three per patch, you don't really need any more than that. You know, it's always nice to come up with sort of ratios when you're coming up with new palettes like this, so... Stay sort of nice and consistent and relatively natural looking. Get into the content creator trees, and definitely because I'm in the tropical theme, um, lots of the palms are going to be more than welcome down the beach here, okay? Let's go ahead and get another one in there. And also maybe do some of the generic date palms. Definitely not averse to more California palms making an appearance in this area too. And then just customize a little sort of beach palm garden, if you like. Don't forget, perhaps a little spattering of broken nature reserve fencing, just to help line the pathway as it comes down into the beach area. And then before you know it, you've now just given just a little walk down onto one of your main beach strips. A lot more personality just by giving it some little little bits of spice at the side, right? <laughs> That's literally what it is. And uh, it, it just makes a difference, doesn't it? I hope, I hope you can sort of get on board with this idea. Uh, these little sort of decorated walkways onto the beach. are going to help us respect the beach a little bit more. Okay? Life's a beach, isn't it? I'm just going to start firing some earthquake sensors around to start sinking power through. Of course, if you don't have the natural disasters DLC, your alternative here is power lines, unfortunately, but you can get some zoning in to link it all through. You should be okay. Let's have a little look at the nighttime look for the first time, shall we? I think everyone should be jumping through now. There we go. Let's see what we think. So again, very bold additions to the skyline, especially with the use of the London Eye. It might not be for you, and if it's not, that's that's totally fine, you know. Feel free to not include a second unique or any uniques at all. 
It's all open to your own interpretation, of course. So now let's come back to our nightlife design here, right? I want to maybe bring in another layer of nightlife now. Let's make sure that indeed he is within our little district here. So, you know, think about having different things on, you know, different layers. Have things set back. It doesn't always have to be on the same row. And then, why don't we do something nicer with the road network here, okay? Let's come off by a little curve. Let's just do a little freeform curve here. Then let's just finish it with a really simple roundabout to help round off the road. We can just do maybe a little too deep one. Yeah. Let's do that. A little 200 deep roundabout. Let's everyone in and then we can finish it off. This is of course open to those same decoration palettes that you've already used. Throughout your beach. Whatever you're becoming fond of now at this point is... Always welcome in these areas. I'm very much kind of a, a date and coconut palm with a couple of rocks and some light overgrowth and a couple of little stretches of sort of old weathered nature reserve fencing. You imagine this sort of wood fencing was here as decoration, but has since just been exposed to the salt and the wind that blows off of the, the ocean and has just degraded over time. And again, keep scanning your beach here. Make sure that you're happy with what's being allowed to develop. Because again, beaches are very much uh, under the remit of builds that can become horrendously ugly very quickly. Let's bring down a dirt road now. And why don't we start bringing this off in some sort of slightly different angles. Maybe down towards uh, the beachfront itself. Because we do have some assets that are very much going to belong in the beach today, including marinas, fishing piers. And we can definitely get some sort of repeated uh, beach volleyball courts out the front here as well. Okay, all welcome additions. Uh, let's also grab a skate park too. I think I'm happy to have uh, this one up on the corner. Yeah. It's not too bad. I want to be on board with it. I can see another opportunity now where I possibly want even to bring the road network back together. Um, if we come onto the guideline on this space. Okay, and we can do this now. I would like to have the zoning free in this space. Let's make this a treed road. So if we come into a park fence, then we cut the zone in behind. It's going to give us three more zonable tiles in this space here, which is very much what I'm looking for. Let's make sure that, again, it's in the district area, so it's going to form a nightlife. Looks like it's just about it should be. Okay. And then we can let this grow now. And delete your fence. Once your buildings are in, it won't change them. So I'm now just starting to create some different sort of depths of the commercial. It's not all on the same road. I think I'm happy with it. We've got some gyms down here. A few clubs, restaurants. All nice stuff. You can use tourism here as well if you want. Um, I would probably just avoid like the taller hotels. I doubt they would build a building this tall on sand. At least on like a beach sand anyway like this. Not entirely sure. I don't think you'd get that. Maybe you do. So, returning to the beachfront idea, we're going to come on with a freeform curve now, uh, with no snapping. And then just line this up along the edge of the beach for wherever we want to place some of these assets. We can keep this going perhaps for the duration if you want. It doesn't all have to be sort of zoned or have things on it. It can just be sort of a beach road. Right, so let's let that flow around the curvature. Back, back into your park areas and then again now. Uh, Jet ski rentals, restaurants on the pier. Everything's going to be wonderful. You can do some of the fishing tours if you like. I'm definitely going to want to remove some of these rocks though. I will bring some of them back, but don't want them here. Okay, so all these little assets now that we really haven't had the chance to use yet in this series. Uh, they can now come into play. Alright, but it's not quite finished yet, is it? Why don't we add in another little micro district, alright? We've got some commercial demand to satisfy, so we can carry on playing with them. Let's go for a green cities area this time. I think I'm certainly happy to have some of my favourite green cities patterns in here. Again, specifically zoned and choosing which assets are allowed to be part of this, because some of them will break the look. Even though I've just realised I've drawn in residential. Let's make sure we draw commercial instead. <laughs> that would be helpful, wouldn't it? go cool so your favorite specific patterns can be brought into this as well let's maybe 
save a space and continue to bring in a sort of desert belt or beach belt, I guess, right? We can use to link people back and to in the area. I'm happy with some of this harsher terraforming around here and because we very much can hide this with sort of overgrowth and trees and create a little bit of a boundary now between the actual waterfront and sort of the rest of the beach attractions themselves. Okay, lots of palmage around this way. A couple of coconuts in there as well. Okay, let's wait for some of these to come in. Of course, <laughs> I'm getting nothing but car parks, which is not the assets I want for once. Okay, we, we don't want the car parks on the beach. You can go for them if you want, but I'm after sort of the nicer commercial looking ones. And um, to sit sort of just in front of these uh, tourism assets, if you like. Okay, so maybe bring them over onto this way. Centralise them a little bit more once everything comes in now. We're starting to generate some layers of height on the beach, and I'm not totally against the usage of the sort of brown cliff face coming in here. It's kind of avoidable when you're playing with a, a beachfront in at least the vanilla maps anyway, when they're on such sort of gradual slopes. Okay, a little cluster of commercial. And a touch of walkability. In and around our tourism assets is going to be great. Fortunately, you are going to get this happening where they have to sort of climb or do like a 20 foot jump to get into the building. But again, I think I'm going to be mostly happy with this idea over here as well. I want to get this second tram flowing now. So I'm going to use this as sort of like a little quick access uh, tram route that comes back through the residentials doesn't complete the full loop into the downtown. If they want to grab that loop, then they can. They just have to switch on to the other line. And we'll go for sort of a match tram system here. Let's uh, watch our new trams come out. And since the other tram line is black, we will make this one white. Go for a sort of a monochromatic theme. Okay, and then these will start coming out now. We should hope we start to see some more people uh, using the beachfront. We can definitely complement this new little road that we designed uh, with some parallel nature reserve pathways. Let's bring these down. Remembering to alternate the side that you draw from in order to get the lights on the same side. So we'll see what happens. Okay, and then we'll go for a little ring of bushes at the top. So you can definitely blend this dirt road in. Okay. It's also going to allow people to cross back in two and come and make use of the pathway down here as well, which you can already see now. Um, it's getting nice and busy as more things come down here. Lots of people deciding to walk down onto the beachfront. Which is really, really what you want to see. All right. I'm actually quite a fan of that fence behind the, uh, the after dark stuff. It works quite nicely, doesn't it? Okay, but busy little beachfront vibes now starting to make themselves known. And again, during our detail and time lapse. Um, lots more of this sort of natural uh, palm growth around the beach is going to help kill a lot of these empty areas. Um, if you're not a fan of them, likewise as much, your sort of larger rock formations will also be welcome here as well. So I'm definitely happy to carry on bringing in some more of these Green Cities vibes. So I'll start sending the district now. And again, I do think we're going to put uh, New Bjork's airport out this way once we come to build it. But uh, we've still got a little more breathing room, so I do want to bring it down a touch more. Again, let's bring down that dirt road, just following the curvature of the water. All right. And then keep those zonings coming in. And if you can see any zones that you're happy with now, uh, start to repeat them. Indeed, I'm very happy with the uh, 4x2s here with the little green cities markets. Also the 2x3s. Very happy with those. Then I think we'll do one final green cities block before we move on to talk about uh, perhaps some more natural detailing. And we're going to bring out, again, deciding the orientation of how we want to snap this is quite important as well. So why don't we do it perhaps off an angle snap? And then we'll bring it down. I'm going to bring it up. Yeah, let's go for out by 10. And then I'm going to come onto an angle snap. I'm going to go for. And here, 20 this side, back down by 10, okay, make perfect little rectangle. I can probably also bring up a little road connection here now as well if we like. And then we can just get a little curve tool and allow some more interconnectivity to come back. And again, lots more detailing 
In these spaces to be had during our time lapse, of course. You'll feel free to use regular commercial if you like. Um, if you've got the patience and without plot the growables or ploppable Rico, uh, some of the university city content creator assets will work very nicely here. But of course, it is kind of up to you. So let's see what I want. I'm going to have three this side. I'm happy with that. We'll also prepare some spaces to come in through the middle here as well. A little spot here for a restroom to come in as well. You know, don't forget to include these assets in and around the beachfront as well, okay? Imagine they would have some kind of public restroom for people down by the water so they don't drop it into the sea like, <laughs> like the rest of the population have been, which is currently what's lying over here. God forbid anyone goes swimming there, right? Not a nice time indeed. And then just... So some big zone in here. Let's make sure we keep this little pathway pattern going. And then we'll line up some nice spots to develop over on this side. It's just going to slightly shift the angle now. Not everything's snapped to this 90 degree orientation. And again, don't have to go green cities. Go tourism, nightlife, regular commercial. Entirely up to you. Whatever you think should be part of your beachfront. So, we'll let that grow up and we'll, of course, keep checking back throughout the episode. But what I want to work on now is how we can maybe do something of a more natural sort of looking beachfront. And indeed, bringing in some of the zoo assets down here as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab a terraforming tool. And I want to grab a layer now that the water is able to flow at. And we're going to start putting away a little bit of our beach. Now, because we're on such a harsh gradient here, we are going to end up with some large cliffs like this, which I don't really want on the beach, but we will work with them. Okay, let's leave our game on three speed here. I want to start cutting out just a couple of little... Essentially, what we're making here is like a little mini rock pool, all right? I'm going to allow us to come in, cut it off in a few different directions. Doesn't all have to be the same, of course. Okay, let's widen it all out. And then just to help with that sort of brown texture that develops. Just a little bit of softening will, of course, take some of the sting out of it. And we can now just allow this sort of little... You imagine this would almost be quite tidal, right? Just a little bit of a rock pool to develop in and around the beach. Let's also reinstate our uh, dirt road, which can now uh, come across as a bridge, which is going to be great. There we go. So I think I'm happy with that as my bridge. It's going to be good for me. And then you can let this sort of meander back around into whatever you're having lying over that way. Okay. And if you want to do a little bit more terraforming, create a little bit of an island around where the pillar sits, all right? You can definitely get involved with some ideas there. Let's open out sort of the mouth of this little pool as well. Okay, so right now we've done a little bit of terraforming and brought in a road network bridge. And I'm mostly happy with the way this is looking. Again, we want to remember to come in and soften uh, little bits of these sort of harsher edges, right? Be happy with them, of course, leave them in. It's entirely up to you. But what is going to work really nicely here is, again, some nature reserve pathway with decoration and allowing the uh, path to kind of flow over and between the dunes here. You can get some very nice, it's almost sort of like nature walking routes, right? You know, people... Taking these pathway across the rock pools if they wanted to, we can feed them back into road networks over this side. And then we can bring this one up and around here as well. And I'm actually going to make this a sort of real life uh, park area. If you want to throw in a park gate, um, you can. Of course, it's going to sort of help decorate the beach as well. I think I might go for a small park or a small gate for the city park stuff. If we can find a place to align it on the road, we should be okay. There we go. Okay, so I can have that here, and that's just going to allow me to paint out uh, a beach area, which we can do by uh, grabbing Hillside Gardens. We'll paint out a park area over the beach, really, is what I meant to say, of course. All right, let's get these over here. Right, we've got some water issues down this way. That's fine. Let's extend them down. Also getting some worker demands in here as well, which I'm... Um, Happy with. Let's go and satisfy a touch more high density demand, maybe over here. Okay, so it's a little bit rough and ready at the minute, isn't it? But that's okay. Let's not worry about that. Let's go back into our rocks again. You know, start feel free to experiment with some of the larger rock faces that you might 
uh, not usually used that much. Okay, go ahead and grab some of the smaller ones as well. Smaller still being quite significantly large, of course, in City Skylines. And then again, your little sort of palm and detailing belts that you're enjoying putting together in your beachfront are always going to be welcome in here as well. Maybe a little bit of Eastern Cottonwood action in there too. A couple of date palms. And don't forget your smaller vanilla bushes as well, you know, sort of the, the chunkier bushes. Little stubbier palm plants, all going to work well within this palette. And before you know it, you can just create a little natural beach area, okay, with some water flowing underneath thanks to the terraforming. Uh, some different layers of landmass and indeed colours of landmass available. Uh, with that terraforming, some clever placement of rocks and some elevated walking pathways. Just bring a lot more life to the beach, right? They really do. Nice sensible sort of flowy pathways here too. All leading up to that main commercial front over there, isn't it? Which I think everyone's going to be enjoying. And again, this can all continue to be expanded. Larger rocks on the cliff faces by the water. Again, your fencing pallets can always be introduced here if you want them to. I think I'll probably leave at my sort of rock pool area quite open if you like. I hope not really close it off too much, but of course a little bit is always welcome. Now we have the part life area in now, which means that certain zoo assets can also be brought in to the area. Uh, I'm a big fan of having the flamingo enclosure on the beach. Okay, it's a really beachy looking asset. It's got some water in it itself, along with some of the little sort of, I think they're the coarse pine trees, are they? Whichever ones they are. Maybe place in another one. Don't forget you've got the sea life enclosure as well. Um, if you wanted to have this in here, this is another very appropriate zoo asset that you can bring down and serve as some kind of tourist attraction. I think I'm actually definitely feeling this to be uh, replacing the restaurant pier in this sort of centralised development that's now starting to happen down this way. It's a little more impressive, isn't it? So, yeah. Just because it's not technically a zoo doesn't mean that some of these assets won't belong here. Definitely stay away from perhaps some of the more obvious ones like elephants. Don't think you really have elephants down by a beach here like this. Sort of the smaller animals are more welcome. Things like the birdhouse and whatnot. Uh, these are all going to sit in relatively nicely uh, within this sort of theme. And then we can even now just bring in some of those favourite palettes again with lighter dustings of the vanilla overgrowth. Touches of soften as well around the uh, formation of the new assets. Just to help them blend into the beach front a little bit more. Let's see if we can get a slope up here. There we go. So I'm going to soften that out a touch. Okay. And we can line this up. Let's go ahead and drop in uh, some different rock assets. Again, you might want to so bringing some cliff face action here that's hanging over the rock pool. And, uh, maybe a larger one this size. With uh, your content creator grasses. Definitely palms. Californias. Cottonwoods. Definitely stay away from the pines, I think, for a beach. Unless you're just dead set on using them, then you can go for it, of course. Alright. Then before we know it... Uh, we will just have a little sort of integrated beach area with some clever use of the zoo assets. It's all going to help bring the beach area to life, isn't it? Okay, so another little idea of how we can combine some natural detailing in order to help decorate a beachfront too. doesn't all have to be very heavily uh, tourist-focused commercial, right? So there is one thing that I'm noticing now, and that is that our downtown highway main on and off ramp system is just threatening to choke, okay? There's a backlog beginning to appear. And as we're adding more tourism drawing assets, you can see that this just starts to get longer and longer. And it will eventually carry on backing up and up. So, the way to diagnose this is just to have a look what's exactly happening. In my opinion, the way to fix this is that there's just too much pressure coming through this junction, okay? Everyone wants to get off here, so we need to provide more ways on and off the highway. So here we go, right? Here's the backlog happening now. It's not totally gridlocked, but it's definitely not great, okay? This isn't this isn't good traffic. So, let's have a look at how we can amend this. Let's go into our highway ramps, right? I want to look for another place where I can perhaps provide some interconnectivity for people to get on and off. Exactly like this point here. 
I'm gonna draw it up by 13 tiles and three elevation steps, all right? And then we can just hook this into the highway. Let's do a slightly smoother curve than that if we can. Now on the section of highway before the slip ramp, I'm gonna upgrade this into a four lane highway, okay? This is gonna force the right lane to become a dedicated turning lane without the use of the traffic manager mod. Okay, so you can already see just how much this is starting to siphon off, all right? But there's more we can do. Indeed, you can remove the traffic light here, come into your junctions and take it away. And I can also see another opportunity to do it over here as well. And then again, just a nice smooth curve into the highway. Switch your direction, and then upgrade the section before into four lane. And then the same four lane upgrade at this intersection here. So it's just going to give that dedicated right turn in lane. And now hopefully we'll see as the a new AI comes into the city, just how much these new ramps are going to siphon off of the main highway. All of which before was trying to barrel through this one junction. So if you're experiencing extreme highway traffic like that in any setting, it doesn't have to be a downtown. In my experience, it's usually just a case of everything's just trying to bottleneck through that one junction. You need more relief points. So you can see now, two new ramps siphoning off traffic into the external or into the internal road networks, which leaves our highway uh, nice and free, and we're noticing a lot less pressure at this junction now. Wonderful news. So highway traffic's flowing again. A little simple upgrade and a couple of little off-ramps. That should help you fix that problem if you do encounter it when working with downtown highway networks like this. Okay, so let's discuss bringing in a ferry terminal. So you can just place this on the side of a shore and it will sit there and look horrific if you want to do that you can but please don't <laughs> it does look, does look terrible let's give it a peninsula all right let's terraform out let's grab our level terrain now again pick a sensible height i think i'm gonna go for this one right here yeah that should be enough for me Uh, let's come ahead into our keys. Again, whichever one you want to use is up to you. And I think I'm feeling a little bit of a simple seawall here. Yeah, I think I'm enjoying this. This is going to be a nice time for all involved. And I can get a pretty rough shape here for the, uh, sh the space that I want. Indeed, you can carry on using the technique that we used um, to carve out the fishing harbour here using the dirt road frames and um, to chisel out a shape that you want, you know, like we did with the park here. That still totally works for ferry harbours. If you want to do that, then absolutely go for it. But with a pretty large terraformed area like this, you're not going to have too much trouble in getting the keys to sit exactly how you want them. All right, and I'm going to have this face in here again, making sure our C connection is over this way. That's going to be great. Let's drop that there on the corner. Go into our roads now. I'm going to grab a one way system. Do a little two foot curve there. Bring everyone in. Two no directions. The trees will eventually grow back uh, once the game realizes this is no longer water. All right, and then let's have a little look. What's going to happen here now? Let's grab our slope tool, grab the top of where we want the slope, and then just start embanking all of this out here. And lots more zoning, a little bit more residential perhaps over this side if you wanted to do. Uh, very much in the vein that we did over here, right? If you want to bring in this Green Cities pattern again. And um, this is a great one to have by the beach. Really nice. Works great. So let's bring down a little windy, sneaky road here now. I'm going to come off my guideline too. And then stick to 490 curves. Get this big arterial road. Okay, lots of decoration opportunities around here again, of course. Bring in the one-way system now. It would be nice if we could uh, perhaps align it here. I think the road guideline's going to snap this over the key, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, it's fine. We can eye this up. Let's bring in a couple of little 180 lengths of one-way road. And also we can use the grid snap. Now we have a grid snap into. Come back to our road guideline as well. There we go. This can now feed into the port. Both of these can feed into the road network. And we can just get some nice, cute, calm little curves back up to there as well. Now, if you wanted to, uh, this little dirt road network uh, that we set up can 
now tie into your new road network over here, uh, bearing in mind that this will be accepting tourists, you know, they are going to come in uh, via the boat here, so if you don't want them to be uh, coming in, then don't let them. Let's also grab another little road out this way and see if we can bring in a road that's going to go parallel with the key. Again, there's more zoning opportunities here. If you want to have a look at another unique building, this is the perfect time. Um, something large and waterfront is always appreciated. Uh, Grand Library might be a little bit too much for you, but you can get an impression of what you can start placing out here. Indeed, if you want to turn it into an enormous park, you can. More park assets are always welcome, right? So I think I'm going to stick at an intercity bus station down here. Again, because I've gone with public transport as the main theme, I'll stick with mainly public transport over here. Uh, so we've got the intercity bus terminal, um, which will allow the acceptance of buses, like internal bus lines alongside intercity buses, which is nice. Or you can dive into one of your public transport hubs here if you want. Um, the bus metro hub would be a good shout, providing you have enough space for it. Uh, some of them are pretty big, so it can take away from the vibe. Um, equally as much if you want to start getting involved in ferries now as well, this is a good point to do so. And um, We could set up a ferry network around here, but... I'm just not a massive lover of ferries. I'm happy with my public transport network. But they can come in here if you wanted them to. Alright. Cool. So, I'm going to go with buses. I want to place down a intercity bus terminal here. I'm going to place it there. And now I can now wrap my little road network around the back of it. Come in behind it. And completely box it in a loop. And it would be good if we could get into there, but... I don't think we can, we'll have to come in this way and probably just box it in around this side now actually. It's going to be the most sensible choice. Now it comes straight up, completes the one way loop for us. Make sure he has water as well. So we can now draw a couple of bus lines out around the downtown if we like. Uh, let's come in, so you can just see these just snap into these little plazas here. It's a really great asset this one, it's really cool. So let's have... A little bus line that's going to serve perhaps the botanical garden and the residentials. We will also get you to converge with the tram line, which again is going to be more interconnected transport interconnectivity. Likewise, again, it can stop right by the metro once more here, and then come back in and complete a loop in this way. Well, it does actually look like, yes, let's force this into a one-way system here. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense, actually, doesn't it? Yeah, so this can come across now. So I want to delete this road here. Now it's the frame. And then this one also wants to become a one-way road network as well. Which, again, once we just click and drag our bus stop, it will enter into the one-way system and keep everyone flowing, which is great. So here we go. So these are the boats. We're going to drop 200 people, or 100 people off at a time, sorry. And very important now is that we check as to how many of these are actually going to walk. Um, if we get a lot of drivers, that's a bad sign. So there's about maybe 10 cars there. The rest of them are walking. Let's see where they're going. I imagine they're going to be jumping on the metro. Uh, there's a metro station here, isn't there? So yeah, this is what you want to see when you have intercity options available. A good percentage of them walking is what you want. Because otherwise these things just become traffic magnets. They just constantly dump sims into the city. Okay. Not bad at all. I think I'm going to enjoy it. And um, there is also, speaking of kind of sims, the statue of Colossalus um, does increase the stay of all tourists in the city by 20%. And um, it is a waterfront asset. It can be relatively garish, um, but... It's not too bad if you can accept its very bold look. Um, and again, if you haven't seen our uh, unique buildings tier list, I cover all of these assets that give buffs to the city and we rank them. It will be in the top right video here if you want to go and check it out. All right, but just having it in, people will come and visit it and it will also extend the stay of tourists in the city as well, which is great. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get another uh, bus line wrapped up around the downtown now. Create a new line. This time you're going to come uh, right down this main strip. Yeah, stop at a couple of places here. Just nice big waterfront road bus line. 
And then you can turn around in the residential areas here. Okay, and then just mimic your stops back along the main road. You can also do kind of like a shuttle express bus out on the highway back into the sort of smaller suburbs that we've been working on. Uh, in hindsight, it's probably nicer to have these bus stops over here, but we'll worry about that in a second. There you go. Buses can come in. If you want to click on your details and change up the bus model, um, if you have the uh, airports DLC now, or sorry, the content creator pack DLC for the new vehicles, then you know, switch one out for a little mini bus if you want. You know, change it up so it's not always the boring vanilla buses. Very cool. Let's have a look, a look at the implementation of this asset. Look how busy the waterways are now. <laughs> See, it's, it's so stupid. <laughs> the way they just line up like this. Yeah, it, it's crazy. So, the Sims or the game will love bringing in Sims via the high capacity networks. So yeah, 425 through this one a week. Just so many people walk in. This is, this is what you want to see, right? This should be starting to spike now. Yeah. Okay. So the same thing will happen once you drop in an airport as well. So it's always good to have multiple intercity options. Don't just lean into one. Um, otherwise they will start to sort of barrel up and start to clog eventually. Right, lots of little plaza ways, of course, outside of your main buildings here. I'm going to help everyone integrate. Be playing with the After Dark DLC. Um, which we actually don't have any taxis yet. Okay, let's do some taxis then. I haven't done these before. Or in, in this series anyway. Um, let's stick a taxi depot down near the sort of port area. Right, and then we can drop down a couple of little taxi stands outside of the harbour. Which are really going to help its aesthetic. Um, let's bring in a little bit of a concrete path now. We'll snap into the grid. Okay, let people start to walk about. Although, because we're in an even number here, it's going to be slightly irritating not to have the path centralised. Um, but we can fix that. So, let's come up from here. No road length either, just no snapping, basically. Yeah. Let's have that one in there. And then snap to an angle. And you're going to line up in the middle. You can probably feel in a little bit of zoo pathway, actually, instead of the part one. Blends in a little nicer with the sand, doesn't it? Okay. There goes a taxi. You've actually very rarely see taxis in the city. Let's see where, where's he going? He's going to pick up this guy all the way over here. Just, just get the metro. <laughs> He's going to be hours. Sat all the way out here waiting for a cab. And it's, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> you see, uh, it's never not going to be funny watching the ferries piling like this. Like they just can't wait. The smart solution here is to make each ferry hold like 500 to 1,000 sims and just have one every 10 minutes or so. <laughs> Rather than this. So stupid. Oh well. Wonderful. So vibes here that can be expanded during our detail time lapse. Again, keep bringing in favourite park assets. Maybe a little sort of waterfront at police station here would also be appreciated if that's what you're into. Maybe use one of your larger sort of chungus ones. There is a very small sweet spot there. There we go. I think that should complement this little port plaza, if you like, quite nicely. Uh, having the large police station here, okay? You could treat it as some sort of customs if you want. Okay, uh, the urge to part life cheese this. <laughs> it's insanely strong. Yeah, put a park gate here and make them pay to walk up, but uh, we'll avoid it for the most part, I think. And it looks like the taxi depot can actually uh, squeeze in relatively sensibly behind there as well. Okay. So, little collection of public transport assets, little service, and a couple of plazas that can really help just bring a little bit more importance into a port area. Of course, if you want to see sort of vastly expanded ports, I would definitely suggest going to check out uh, Novaria's uh, cargo terminal and passenger terminals. Um, insanely busy and Great. <laughs> I really like uh, Navaria's uh, passenger terminal. It turned out nicely. Cool. So I'm going to leave that road hooked in there now as well. I'm also going to grab a little bit of slope terrain just to get rid of this stuff here. Grab a little bit of soften just to sort these out. So I'm really interested to see actually just how many people choose to take this route back out. We will of course sing. Can we see a little minibus yet? Yeah, there they go. 
do only hold 20, so you know, bear in mind that it might not be the most appropriate vehicle. It's, there's still capacity on them yet, there's 127 at this stop. But yeah, there's still some buses here that I've got zero people on them, so... It's fine, nice little sort of beachside minibus. It's pretty cute. We'll do the same with the other one as well. Um, how busy are you? Yeah, this is a pretty busy line. Let's change this into double decker airport bus then. That should be quite nice. However, guys, that does feel like a wonderful place for a detailing time lapse. Now we've put together several different ideas as to how we can work with the downtown beachfront. I want to carry on and bring through all of my walkability palettes using nature reserve fence and these little sort of overgrown palm clusters around larger rock formations to help decorate the larger, emptier swaths of beach that are over here. Of course, if you're into that, then keep them around. I'm also going to have a look at some nature reserve props from the Park Life DLC because they do have a couple of kayaks. And whilst we basically have no beach props in the vanilla game, the kayaks along the beachfront can be a nice welcome addition. Alongside maybe a little sort of campsite as well. And if you wanted to grab some of the uh, these ones here, the campfire site too. Uh, which we might do a couple of. I might actually switch out my uh, park gate for a nature reserve gate. Just so we can pop some of those early assets because they will work nicely here. Uh, bring in the rest of the sort of rock pool idea. Okay, dropping some rocks in the water as well. Overgrowth around the pillar and the island. Uh, lots more natural empty beach here. Refine some of the deeds here and bring us some tree patterns. I need some further walkability and all our little favourite bits and pieces. That we like to include around our builds now. And I'm definitely going to switch out uh, the restaurant pier for the sea life enclosure. I had to sit down this central spine now with the London Eye as the main sort of tourist attraction on the beach. A few more ploppable park assets, like volleyball courts, tennis courts, basketball courts, everything else that we love to bring in in detail. Otherwise, let's detail the beachfront and we'll be right back.
Okay, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If at any point today you found that you've enjoyed yourself, a like and a comment below really helps me out and brings more people to my channel. If you're really enjoying the videos, there are ways to support them via instant gaming, Patreon and merchandise below. And equally as much, if you haven't enjoyed it and have still somehow made it this far into the video, thank you for the view time and leave me a dislike as well. I've expanded the nature reserve vibes by bringing in some of the extremely large rock formations and also upgraded the dirt road into a two lane highway in some directions and also upgraded the dirt road in a couple of places into the highways so people can come and go from this area at high speed and treat it almost as like a little extension arm of the ring road that hugs the other side of the coastline from here. Lots of little prop detailing in and around the new networks including a brand new cycle highway over by the beach, plenty of detailing over by the keys by the ferry terminal. The beachfront is looking quite spicy now, uh, lots more pathways and overgrowth with some slightly larger rock formations as well. Brought in some zoo fencing around the tram stops just to help but kind of mark them out as actual stops along the line so it's not just endless grey. And some little bush patterns along the coast help some of these slightly more awkward tourism assets to sit a little bit easier on the beach. And a couple more park assets knocking about too. Do hang around for the rest of the outro Taj, there was a ton of detail that you guys wouldn't have seen. But I like to thank you all so much for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.